to YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'll be taking you guys through the paintwork on this Toyota Corolla. We're gonna be painting it in silver metallic. The paint code is 1F7 and the name is actually just silver metallic. Pretty plain name there for it. We're gonna be using the Chromax Pro water-based system. So first up, you'll probably notice that I went around and did all my edge masking on the guards that I'm blending. I then threw the piece of plastic over it, but I haven't actually cut that out yet, mainly because I've still got a bit of wet on wet to do on this bumper bar. Now the bonnet was a repair, it got primed, and that's not gonna need any wet on wet, but this bumper bar is gonna need some plastic primer first. So as far as the prep work went on this bumper bar, all I did was get a 1000 grit Merca sanding sponge, scuffed over the entire bar, but there was actually a couple of chips from out of the box. So I got the bar out of the box and there was a few chips in there, so I had to sand them back. Hindsight, I probably should have wet rubbed it, but I just went 32500 and did it all dry and I scuffed over it with a thousand grit as well. But I was actually left with a few little fluffy furry bits of plastic, as you can see down the bottom there. And there's another piece up the top there where I'm spraying now. So the product I'm spraying now is just a 1K plastic primer. 800R is the product number on it and that's a Chromax product. Um, just one coat is all it needs, just one wet coat, make sure you get all your edges and then I'll be putting some uh, wet on wet primer over the top of that. So there is actually an additive that you can include into your non-sanding primer which will make it so that you can spray straight over the plastic without having to put this plastic primer down. So it's just a plastic additive and they do say that you can actually use that on a panel because that's what I said to the paint wrap. I said, oh, but you know, that, that'll mean you have to mix up too. So you've got a guard or a brand new bar, uh, sorry, a brand new guard or a brand new bonnet and you want to wet on wet that at the same time as your bumper bar. And he said, no, nah, that's not an issue. You can still use it over new panels as well. Um, but I just did ask the other painter, I said, why don't you guys use that? Um, he said, oh, you know, you can get it in if you want. That's not an issue. And I said, well, you're obviously not using it. Is there a reason for it? And he said, yeah, well, basically it makes it go a little bit gooey and uh, jelly and stuff like that. So perfect instance on this car here uh, or this bumper bar here. I did have a few spots that I had to scuff back. And if I had to probably put that uh, additive in, then it may have made it a little bit trickier to sand back. So I'm happy to do it this way. It's really not a big deal to put a coat of plastic primer over it first. Another advantage to putting your wet on wet down over a black bumper bar is coverage as well. There's nothing worse than getting your car out the front in the sun and the color is different, you know. So um, yeah, this will obviously act as a good ground coat. Although the Chromax Pro water-based system has extremely amazing coverage, um, it can still never hurt. Sometimes you can get caught out. Um, so yeah, there's our one nice wet coat over that. I did leave that uh, plastic primer for five minutes prior to putting the wet on wet down. And then while I'm waiting for that wet on wet to dry, I'll then go on with the masking on these two guards. So again, I decided to include just a little bit of the masking stage. I've had a few people ask about the masking um, and they've said, how the hell do you mask with the tape on your wrist? So the biggest issue you will have is getting the tape off the roll and into both of your hands at the same time but I did slow that section right down so you hang around for another minute here I'll put it right into slow-mo and you'll be able to see exactly how I do it um, pretty self-explanatory what I'm doing there just cutting around the edges but obviously being careful that I don't cut right into it um, especially on the back edge of that guard where the front edge of the door is you know we don't want to unmask it and then find that there's a great big dirty uh, razor blade line through the front of your door uh, don't laugh I've seen people do it before uh, so yeah just cutting around and then we'll just be taping down uh, you can use paper but I've found these days in Australia anyway no one really uses paper anymore I do find that this is a far superior method and the plastic these days has a coating on one side so make sure you get it up the right way obviously again don't laugh I've seen experienced tradesmen do it a guy set me up there one day the plastic was up the wrong way it was all going good happy days until I got to the clear coat because the uh, higher pressure that I was using with the clear coat it just ended up flaking off all that base coat and it all landed back in my job and it made a big mess out of it but as far as masking with the tape on your wrist goes I find it's definitely the quickest way to get it done I'm always looking for a way to say one minute or two minutes and uh, it adds up at the end of the day when you're the guy that's getting five or four or five cars done a day you know you're probably gonna be the first one to get the pay rise and uh, yeah always like to cut uh, cut down on my time without cutting too many corners I guess uh, yeah 
you've got to have that mix between quality and speed, don't you? So there we go. That's me slowing it down there. You can just see, just get your wrist, uh, get your fingers around and yeah, just rip it off, I guess. There you go. It's pretty simple, really. Um, like anything, takes time. Practice makes perfect. Um, I don't believe anyone actually taught me that method as such. I actually just saw another painter doing it one day when I was an apprentice. I actually used to laugh at him and saying, ha ha, look at you with the tape around your wrist. But um, yeah, again, some people laugh at me sometimes, but I'm probably one of the faster maskers around. And on that top edge, that's just a back mask, simple old back mask. And uh, when I go to apply the paint, I'm not flooding that edge with paint. So there's gonna be minimal to no edge there and around all your door openings. I do a lot of back masking. I don't get too involved with the false edge masking. Yes, there are some circumstances where I will use it, but I don't use it all over every single edge. I find it a little bit overkill sometimes, but everyone's got their own methods. I'm not out there to tell you what you have to do. I'm just telling you how I do it and the methods that work for me. Um, again, with application and stuff like that, um, you know, I did have the Chromax guys come out, but as the other guy that I'm working with said, they're gonna tell you to follow the yellow brick road. If you take Dorothy off into the woods, well, that's sort of up to you. You're on your own. I'm obviously not affiliated with Chromax or Exalta or any of the paint brands that I do use. So my methods may vary slightly. And at the end of the day, it's whatever's gonna get you the results. Um, I'm sure in a way they kind of don't really care as long as you're getting good quality results and you're able to um, yeah, obtain adhesion, get your good color matches. Um, but yeah, I've found with the Chromax system, the Spectro has let me down a few times. Uh, I made a quick mention to that the other day in one of my other videos. Um, I found that the Standox uh, basis lack system, so the solvent-based system, in uh, Standox and the Spectro, I lived off that thing and I got it down to a fine art that, yeah, very rarely had to do a heavy uh, amount of color matching. Whereas with this uh, Chromax system, yeah, there's been a few color, there's been a few times I've literally just had to tip the color out and start again. Because it covers so quickly and like you just go one and a half coats, that's it. Uh, if you've got a color that's sort of beyond bringing back, it's gonna go to waste. Whereas in a sort of solvent-based system, you can just say, say you've mixed up 700 mils to paint a job like this. Um, you could just say, all right, I'm gonna mix 300 mils up of the color, match that, get that one right, use the other color as a ground coat. Whereas with this, you really don't have that option just because you're putting minimal amount of base coat on. So yeah, part of the reason is that the tinters are extra strength so if you mix a color up on this system say you're mixing up one liter there might only be say 300 mils of the actual color in it um whereas the rest of it is binders and uh sort of reducers and stuff like that so the rest of it's clear so when you go to color matching you're dealing with ultra high strength tinters um they do have a low strength mostly uh, of most colors, but even then they are still extremely strong. So it really takes two drops and yeah, you can totally ruin a color if you're not careful. Um, yeah, I take responsibility for a few of the times, but at, at the end of the day, colors are really going to be the hard point of most paint systems anyway. And that's something that's really only gonna come with time. You find a system that's gonna start working for you, whether or not it be with the Spectro or color chips, which I'm starting to lean towards color chips. Um, yeah, the first two weeks I was just going spectro, spectro, spectro on everything because that's what I was used to and I've started to lean towards, uh, yeah, the color chips. Unless they're on sort of the um, local colors like the Holdens and Fords and stuff like that, they may not actually have the color chips for them, so I'll, I'll use the spectro. Um, anyway, all in all, I'm very impressed with this system. It's definitely great. It, uh, a little bit lo longer drying times, but, you know, you can work around that, turn the booth, heat up, uh, I try not to blow air on it because I've done it a couple of times. Like you've got those air blower guns and I've just ended up with silicon all over it probably because it's air coming out of the air lines. Although we do have wall filters, we've got receiver dryers that dry the air out. So yes, as far as spraying goes, we're not gonna have any contaminants or the amount that we do have is so low that it's not going to affect the paintwork. But when you're blowing air onto it, you're just amplifying the amount. So let's just say there's 0.1 of a gram per 100 grams um, of whatever, silicon or oil or some sort of a contaminant in that air. You're amplifying that because you're blowing so much air on there. Anyway, down to our application on the uh, silver. 
I'm using the Dwellbest GPI, another one I got from Spray Guns Direct. I've been extremely happy with the way this gun's been performing for the water base. 1.4 mm on it, and it is the GP1 air cap. Um, I've found you have to be, uh, yeah, get this application right on the silvers, or you will get mottle. And it's not like solvent, whereas if you get some mottle, you can just sort of go cross hatch it and zigzag it and keep going, putting more on. Once you get your two coats on, you want to get it right first shot, basically. And you see, you see a bit of slight model, maybe just better off run with it. So as you saw there, I've just got my first coat down. Nice wet coat. They really kept drumming into me, keep that overlap nice and tight. Now, I can't tell you the exact overlap that I use. I don't measure it, but yeah, just use a nice tight overlap. And straight away, no flash off times. Go straight on with your drop coat. So you're holding the gun right back, I'm still using two bar. I actually had a couple of guys recently say that on that drop coat, drop it down to 1.2 bar if you're having trouble with mottle on some of your silvers. So yeah, if you are experiencing troubles with your silvers and mottle, maybe just try a few different application methods and see what you can come up with. But look, this bonnet here really did look absolutely amazing. One thing I will make a mention to when you're using your water-based paint, be extremely extremely careful of bare metal you cannot paint water over bare metal what's going to happen it's going to rust obviously so always use a bit of 1k primer just the tiniest amount use a bit of wet on wet and you've got to be a bit more particular with that prep so these are blend guards there's no cut throughs whatsoever um, there was one little patch where I had to put a bit of fine filler in the front of that guard. There was a very tiny uh, stone chip, but I didn't go back to bare metal, so I was able to paint straight over it. And even as far as just your general prep work goes, I used to always finish my blends off with 800 grit, and that was fine for my solvent base, but I've been using those 1000 grit Merca sanding sponges that you probably noticed me using before on that bumper bar. That was that disc that sanding disc so I just um, sand over the entire thing with 800 grit on the orbital and then finish it off with the 1000 grit and that's perfectly fine for your prep work um, yeah even on the bonnet and stuff like that let's just say I was doing solvent 500 would probably be enough and I have painted with 500 uh, over with the water base but for what it takes just give it a quick sand over with 800 grit where you're putting color 1000 where you're putting uh, blend so where your clear coats are um, and you may have noticed that I'm tack ragging this even after painting that first guard because there's probably going to be a slight amount of misty overspray on there and I don't want to be painting over that. Again, I'm using the ANI F150 for my base coat blender. This is actually quite an amazing gun. I probably went a little bit harsh on it in the review. Um, it's probably better than any other guns in its price range. It was definitely, it was $150 at the exchange rates when I got it. Uh, again, from Spray Guns Direct. Uh, I was thinking about it the other day, and if I had no spray guns and I was on a budget and I was working in a shop like this where you need a good three, four, five guns, I would actually happily buy, you know, four of them and maybe just a Pro or a Pro Light or something like that for my clear coat. Um, whilst you can spray clear coat with that a and I F-150, I just prefer to have a slightly better gun for my clear coat. Now the biggest, probably one of the biggest gripes I did have about that a and I F-150 was the pot just didn't seem to be well made like the Devilba Sada and I water pots are. They just seem a bit sturdier and it sometimes doesn't fit on there quite right. But the PPS adapters from a Devilbus pot will actually fit. So they've got the same thread as a Devilbus pot. If you've got an old Devilbus pot sitting around, you can probably use that. Or you can just, like I'm using at the moment, do the PPS. So, uh, yeah, PPS adapter straight onto it from the Devilbus. Um, yeah, straight onto the bumper bar. There's a few ways you can do a bumper bar. And look, the paint reps weren't, like, telling me you have to do it this way. So you can, you've got the choice of doing one corner the center section and then the other corner so you put your heavy coat drop coat uh, on one section then go to the center section then go to the other side or you can just put your heavy coat over the entire thing and then put your drop coat on after over the entire thing same with the bonnet um, some people say you should put uh, paint one side first so heavy coat drop coat and then move over to the other side so you're not letting that base coat dry but again you know I'm not out there to tell you what you have to do there's a few methods out there that you can do, and it's entirely up to you how you do it. As you can see there, I decided just to go over the entire bar and then come around doing my drop coat, and I did the same thing on the bonnet. 
paint the entire bonnet first and put the um, drop coat over the top of that. And these methods are obviously working for me. I was quite impressed with how this job came up. I actually own one of these cars and that's the main reason this video got edited first because I do have a bit of a yeah, soft spot for these Corollas well priced they're economical and they've just got everything you need because i've got the 2014 model i didn't actually check the year on this but it seemed like it was the newer model so this might be the 2015 or very early 2016 model but yeah mine's red and if you want to have a look at my car a bit more in depth you can check it out on my raw channel i did a bit of a video on it so that's my base coat down i had the base coat blender in the ani 1.4 the f-150 had my water-based base coat gpi 1.4 that thing puts it on really nice and Valaria was for the wet on wet you might say geez that's a bit of a nice gun to be using wet on wet but it is just important as any other stage so I'd like to have it in a nice gun you can see it looks really blue over here I did keep that clear coat just off the edge a little bit and yeah I think the blends gonna look quite nice by the time they dry down a couple of coats of clear on it too So just the old heavy coat, drop coat application. I might go and put the temperature up on the booth a touch. I had a couple of little spots, one here and one over here where there was a bit of uh, furry plastic where I had a couple of plastic repairs that didn't quite fill up. I probably should have in hindsight given it a wet rub prior to painting, but it wasn't a big deal. I just scuffed it out um, in the wet on wet primer and put a touch more over it. Hopefully that'll dry down. Another thing is I like to uh, just leave my base coat, the color in the gun. Because uh, sometimes this water base can, it can look nice when it's wet or whatever and then it dries down and it'll sink into those scratches and you may have a little bit you need to puff over it. So no use in cleaning that gun out until uh, after you've cleared and you know it's, it looks right. So go mix some clear up, put the heat up on the booth and um, yeah probably around 10-15 minutes that should be right to clear I just decided to give you guys a bit of a look at the various stages of drying so you can see those guards are just about ready they've dried down quite nice I've got no sanding scratches the blends are looking good um, but I might have gone a touch wetter on that bonnet uh, because I didn't want to get any mottle in it so you really do have to get it on nice and wet and then yeah you can see it's still drying down but at this point here it's all dry Obviously the guards were already dry, but then yeah, I just pumped that uh, booth temperature up a bit um, As I said before, I don't like blowing air on the panels I guess if yeah, you can probably actually end up blowing dust in there as well There's a, a possibility of that, but yeah as you can see there the bonnets all dried down and uh, mottle less and yeah I'll tell you what one thing I have definitely noticed with the water-based base coats they're just a lot cleaner and you're, you're actually left with a lower film build than the solvent based base coats but yeah sometimes you'll think it's all going good and in your base coat yep it looks great you go and put a clear, clear coat of clear over it and you get junk all through it and you're like oh what the hell but I don't seem to be getting that with the water base as much like that bonnet it is just a bit like it's as close to off the gun as you are going to get like there was one tiny bit of crap in it but you know if it was my car I would not have denibbed it at all and it was a nice OEM finish so I didn't go for glory I'm, it's not like I'm you know going for a glass dead flat finish on a show car or anything like that at the end of the day this is refinishing we have to match the OEM finish you know there's no use in having one uh, half the car looking amazing and then the rest of it looking factory because it's, it's going to stand out more so the application method i'm using with the clear coat is the tack and whack or grip and rip as some people call it uh glazer used to call it uh 30 70 which i find a little bit misleading like a 30 percent coat followed by a 70 percent coat to me a 30 percent coat wouldn't even be covered but you got to make sure that that first coat is as thin as you can get it while still having it covered if that makes sense so that you can't actually see through to any of the base coat and then follow that by another heavy coat but again you can replicate any orange peel you want just through application and pressures so if i was going for say a japanese style finish i'm going to go a little bit quicker on this if i was going for a european finish i would probably just go a little bit slower touch lower pressure so you're going to get a thicker atomization and you can 
replicate just about any finish using this method and this gun. So the TE20 is the air cap I've got it, and it's the 1.3 on the Devilbus GTI Pro Lite. It is my go-to clear gun, and after changing around to so many different guns, it's like a good old friend that's always going to do you right. You know what you're going to get when you're using this gun. I did use the NSO Water Supernova in my previous video, and again, that's another slick gun. I would like to get one of them myself one day soon. That was uh, a loan off one of the other spray painters. Uh, another thing I used recently was the Segola 4500 Extreme. I thought, you know what, I'll revisit that. I gave it a bad review, but you know what? I used it again and I just wasn't feeling the love for it. I may do another review, but I may not. I'm a very busy man. And yeah, lots of other video requests that I've got. And yeah, I've got a few more guns coming from Spray Guns Direct soon. A couple of different dual with GTIs. They've redone their GTI Pro and the Pro Lite uh, for a couple of different colors. And yeah, it'll be cool to do some uh, comparison videos on the latest from Devilbus as well. Um, so I look forward to that. I do apologize in this video that there has been a little bit of gunk on the lens of my camera. It's off there to the left of center of screen, just a touch, but hey, I decided it was good enough. Uh, as one of you guys said, well, we're not paying anything for it, so we can hardly complain anyway. I think I've included a lot of information. I hope you guys have been able to benefit from this video. I'd just like to say a big thanks to you guys for watching. I know that I have got the respect of a lot of good painters in the trade, all the way from you guys to the DIY guys, to the apprentices, and just to the people that are interested in seeing how it's done. But yeah, to get the respect of you experienced painters, that's uh, what really says something to me. And yeah, it's just great, all the comments, the likes, uh, the shares and all that that I've been getting on this channel lately. I do apologize it dries if I can't get back to every question. There is only one of me, obviously, and I do have a life I'm trying to live in between this YouTube channel. Um, yeah, I'll try to get one video up a week these days, but I can't promise anything because I am pretty busy. I'm back in Melbourne now. This is where I'm working, so yeah. There's more for me to do here, basically. When I was over there in Perth, it was just YouTube and work, YouTube and work. I had no real friends over there, and I kind of kept it that way deliberately in a way. I just, yeah, very focused on um, this YouTube channel and, yeah, making a bit of money. But now I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to just chill out and actually enjoy life a bit, go over, see some friends on the weekend, so I don't have that amount of time to spend on making these videos. But the CC6400 Clear, which I'm using here, is absolutely amazing. So it's a VOC Clear, and we use that performance agent in it. I think it's something to do with emissions, so it's not a reducer, which is basically a solvent, which will then cause more emissions when it evaporates out. So there we go, five and a half minutes for the clear coat on this uh, Toyota Corolla. GDI Pro Light. T20 1.3 mil, four turns out on the fluid, two bar pressure with the trigger depressed, and full fan. Made for quite a clean job, and yes, I did the grip and rip, or tuck and whack, whatever you want to call it. Application method with the CC 6400 clear. Very clean. This is my car, probably wouldn't bother polishing it. Like for a bonnet, that's, that's really clean. If I was to do that in solvent, I would imagine there'd probably be a couple of bits of crap in it, but that is basically off the gun there. There's a couple of very, very minor imperfections, but it's really starting to show me. Like, you've got a tiny little one here. I would leave it if it was my car. Definitely be happy to drive that around. I'd rather an off the gun finish than polish with this. One here that I just saw before that I probably would get out. It's a bit of a big chunk that landed in there somehow. Not sure if that's showing up. One or two just there. Efficient mix again. Um, so the way I figure it out is 300 for a bonnet, 200 for a bar, 100 for each guard because they're a small guard. Um, I decided to put two coats on the bumper bar. You can go with one coat, but I love these little Corollas. I own one, the previous year model. And um, I just thought, why not put an extra coat on it? Because coming to the end, I had that little bit extra uh, clear coat. I probably could have mixed up 250 because it's a smaller bonnet than average. But yeah, real, real happy with that. Color blended out nice. Um, and there was no real mottle in that bonnet. It's laid down quite nice. Go clean the gun out. Give it five minutes while it's tacking off. Then give it a bake for 40 minutes. Bob's your uncle.
I'll do my best to get some footage of it when it's all back together and washed up on my lunch break. Here's a quick look at the end result. That's a car that I would definitely be happy to drive around. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.